Today on uh, Heat Geek, obviously it's circa 145 square metres of underfloor heating. This house is going to be standing there for a meter warmer. You'll be naturally warm to bend at 100 mil centimetres. You probably haven't seen much of me before. Uh, my name's Greg. I'm here in central London. We've got an ongoing project here in a circa 100 year old property. And today we are installing uh, underfloor heating as part of an air source heat pump installation. Let's go and have a look around the building. Guys are really busy around here at the moment. This is going to be our main plant area. Our air source heat pumps are located outside the other side of this wall. Uh, we'll have accumulators, hot water cylinder. It's quite a simple system. We've got a five kilowatt heat load here and a five kilowatt heat pump. So no volumizers or buffers needed. And as you'll see in a minute, we're serving underfloor heating across three floors. Property is circa 145 square meters of underfloor heating. Um, over two manifolds. So this is our first floor. We've got manifolds. Over here, nine zones of underfloor heating. Um, we have uh, typically 100 millimeter centers for, for obviously low temperature. By the way, guys, if you're interested in becoming a heat geek like Greg and massively increasing your earning potential, check out our courses on our website. And if you're looking for a heating solution yourself, find a heat geek on our heat geek map. So Ben at the moment, he's just providing some additional clipping on here. The nature of the egg crate style tray that we lay down, which helps us root the pipe just under the tension of the pipe work, it has a tendency just to lift. So we've got Celotex style insulation underneath the crate, which then just creates some additional clips just to hold that all down. So that when the screen goes down, we've got no high points in the floor at all. So into the second floor of the property, we've got a slightly different setup up here. So this is a bit of an unusual one even for us. So we've got a, Lewis, a more commercial style Lewis deck floor that's gone down. And as you can see, we've got a clip rail system going in uh, for the underfloor. A little bit of forethought needed here just to, to make sure that we've got the exact pipe routes in and out of each area back to our manifold, which again up here, I think it's a nine port manifold, 16 mil diameter pipe, and again, 100 mil pipe centers. Because of the nature of the layout of the floor, we've opted and had to really go for an up and down method as opposed to a snail. I'll be going laying this underfloor heating. Like that, it's not. I'm not having to resist where the, where the pipe's just slightly twisted. It's like that. What are you having to do then? You're having to, you're having to wrestle the pipe because it's twisting. Yeah, so it doesn't. It, it won't. It doesn't naturally want to bend at 100 mil centers. So we have to kind of light bulb the end slightly. But the light bulb is easier if the, if the pipe's coming nicely off of the coil, as it because it's kind of got a memory. But if it goes against its memory and then it wants to twist, and then trying to get that light bulb without a kink just means you've got to manipulate it for a bit longer. Right, I'm going to uh, crack on with this. Still quite a bit to do. Harrison, our cameraman's going to get a few more shots and be out of here. And uh, I think that's it for now, so we'll see you in the next one. That's showbiz, folks!